Next to air, water is the most important natural physical resource essential for the survival of any form of life on Earth. There cannot be any life without water. After the minimum amount of water required for survival, only then does a human being look for other resources such as food, shelter and clothing. These days we learn and talk about pollution of rivers, lakes, groundwater and even the oceans, the atmosphere and the land. We have been living on this earth since the day the human race evolved. We have been using water and discharging wastewater all the time. But during the last 30 to 40 years, the problem of water pollution has become acute. Out of the total water on Earth, 97.3% is in the oceans and deep in the Earth's crust. This is not fresh water and we cannot use it. 2.1% of the world's water is locked up in ice caps and glaciers. This is fresh water but not accessible and therefore not usable by us. The amount of fresh water in rivers, streams and lakes is only 0.027% and the underground usable fresh water is 0.573%. Therefore, the total usable water on this earth is only 0.6%. The distribution of this usable fresh water is such that some of it is in inaccessible regions. Therefore, the fresh water available for use in a convenient form is less than half percent. Pollution is the presence of some outside matter in an otherwise pure substance to an extent when its use is harmful for human beings, animals and plants and even materials. Such effects may be fast or slow. The slow effects may show themselves after a considerable lapse of time. From the pollution point of view, the basic substances of importance are the natural resources, namely air, water and land. Noise may also be included as a pollutant from a physiological point of view. However, here we are talking about water pollution. But we must be clear as to which type of water we mean. In our daily usage we talk about pure water, fresh water, and clean water. By fresh water, we generally mean either flowing water in rivers or water collected from such sources and stored or drinking water. By clean water, we mean fresh water which does not contain any visible contaminants such as suspended particles or dissolved impurities. But usually, we talk about drinking water well water, river water, ground water, sea water, and so on. All the waters are, as a rule, not pure water in the chemical sense. They have some impurities, and they differ in the amount of impurities present. So, these may be considered as aqueous solutions containing different amounts of impurities or extraneous substances either in suspension or in solution. All these aqueous solutions may be used by human beings or other forms of life without harmful effects if the impurities are present within specified limits. It is these aqueous solutions which may become polluted if the quantity of the impurities exceeds the limit. Water consumed by human beings and used in industry and agriculture are not completely consumed. Most of this water is released again as wastewater and ultimately flows back to large water bodies such as a river, a lake, a pond, an ocean 
or underground aquifers. Most of the water pollution is caused by such wastewaters. The wastewater contains more extraneous substances than the original aqueous solution and it cannot be reused in that form for the same purpose. Water pollution may also be caused by natural processes such as erosion of soil, mineral deposits, volcanic eruptions and so on. But these are of minor consequence and have been going on for a long time. The natural systems are capable of absorbing or neutralizing the pollutants if these are present in small amounts. This capability of the natural systems depends on the environment around them. Such pollution in small amounts has always been present. But the pollution due to man-made processes or activities has increased to alarming levels during the past few decades. The pollution levels at times go beyond the specified limits. For example, if the salt content is beyond the limit, we cannot drink such water and possibly cannot use it for other domestic purposes. Similarly, if there is decomposed organic matter in water, we cannot bear the odor. Thus, the major sources of water pollution fall under the following categories. Municipal wastewaters, industrial wastewaters, agricultural runoff, stormwater and urban runoff. Municipal wastewater may contain various wastes such as oil, cleaning solvents, sand, toxic metals, organic wastes, microorganisms and plastic material. Industrial wastewaters contain different wastes which depend on the nature of the industrial process. These wastes include organics, suspended solids, bacteria and toxic discharges. Agricultural runoffs contain fertilizers, pesticides and soil minerals. In all these wastewaters, the degree and the nature of pollution are indicated or measured by the following indicators. Dissolved oxygen. Total dissolved solids. Suspended solids. Bacteria. Nutrients. Colors and turbidity. Oil and grease pH value, radioactivity. If we examine the location of industries in any part of the world, we would find that most of them are located close to some water source. The reason is that most industrial processes require water. It is used for cooling, cleaning, as a raw material, as a solvent or in some other way. When water is used, wastewater is generated. The wastewater is never of the quality of the original water used. It always contains impurities. The nature of the impurities will depend on the type of industry, the processes being utilized there and the quantity used. For example, effluent generated from a sugar factory of 1200 tons per day crushing capacity has been found to contain heat, low pH, dissolved and suspended solids, oil, etc. It will have high BOD and COD. The man-made fiber industry is capable of generating large quantities of pollutants. Similarly, tanneries and breweries are highly polluting industries. In Chitali village of Ahmednagar district in Maharashtra, the untreated effluent from a distillery was found to pollute a large number of wells. Similarly, in Pali region of Rajasthan, the water coming out of wells and tube wells was found to be colored and polluted on account of the large number of cloth dyeing and printing industries in the area. 
oceans, which contain a very large quantity of water, are also getting polluted due to industrial wastes. Most of the coastal areas where industries are located indicate pollution of water. Even the deeper areas of oceans are not free from this menace. For example, in San Diego Harbor in 1962, about 38 million fish were killed by pollution. In 1963, millions of fish were killed in Chesapeake Bay. Deaths of birds and other animals due to water pollution are also reported quite frequently from all over the world. A recent study in the Netherlands proves that due to the pollution of surface water with pesticides and PCBs, birds lay fewer eggs and the hatching rate of eggs came down to 39%. With the growth in population, more and more wastes are generated and it has become practically impossible to properly treat all the waste generated from human settlements. A large quantity of these wastes are dumped on land or left to flow into rivers, lakes, ponds or oceans. So they lead to pollution, including that of water. This phenomenon is more acute in poor and developing countries. On the one hand, they have large populations, and on the other, they have limited resources. As far as rural areas are concerned, in our country, or for that matter in most developing countries, even sewage facilities are rare. Domestic sewage and other wastes are left untreated. With the growth in population all around, and the use of new chemicals and synthetic materials, even the villages are becoming potent contributors to water pollution. In the villages, dead bodies are thrown in the river, lake or pond. They decay and generate bacteria in the water. Besides, many people in India are in the habit of attending to the calls of nature in open fields and sometimes near rivers, tanks and wells. The result is, that the bacteria seeps into the water bodies. When someone comes and takes the water out from that water body, the bacteria also goes with the water. The use of such water gives rise to infection and disease. We hear of many waterborne diseases, such as cholera and gastroenteritis. These are symptoms caused by bacteria in water. Detergents such as washing powders, washing soaps and toilet cleaners containing acids and toilet soaps pollute water to an extent that such water is harmful to living beings if reused. Agriculture is another potential source of water pollution. During irrigation, it is quite common to find excess water being applied. This causes soil erosion and washes nutrients from the soil. Eroded soil particles and nutrients flow with agricultural runoffs and pollute water bodies. In modern agriculture, the use of pesticides and fertilizers has become very common. Most of the time, chemical fertilizers and pesticides are applied without actual assessment of the exact requirements. The result is that with rainwater or irrigation water, these are washed away and carried to rivers, ponds, lakes, oceans, or to the groundwater table. In a recent study conducted in Gujarat, it was found that the groundwater in major parts of districts such as Vadodara, Amreli, and Bhavnagar contain high concentrations of nitrates. High nitrate in groundwater has been widely reported from other areas of the country too. Nitrogenous fertilizers used in excess lead to high nitrate in soil and groundwater. Nitrate in drinking water beyond 45 milligrams per liter is harmful, especially for children. It causes a disease called mathmoglobemia. If surface water like ponds and lakes receive a high dose of nutrients, it leads to the fast growth of phytoplanktons and algae. 
the water becomes useless for drinking, washing, bathing and fish culture. Some pesticides have a long life. They remain intact for years. For example, DDT, BHC, Aldrin and Dialdrin are some common pesticides which can cause an adverse impact on the environment. They are very harmful to fish, animals, birds and human beings. From the soil, they enter the plants. From plants, they enter into vegetables, and then into animals and human beings. From the soil, they are also carried off by rainwater and irrigation water to water bodies where they accumulate. On the one hand, they kill useful organisms present in water and on the other, they enter the food chain. During this passage, biological magnification also takes place. For example, one study found that if the waters of a lake had only 0.5 parts of DDT per thousand million, human fat could contain up to 12 ppm of DDT. In developing countries, including India, the use of these cheap and persistent pesticides is more common. For example, in India, out of 85,000 tons of pesticides consumed per year, DDT and BHC account for 49,000 tons. India consumes about 77% of the world's production of DDT and 95% of BHC. In a study, it was found that the body fat of Delhi's residents has up to 26 ppm of DDT, while the safe limit is only 1.25 ppm. Similarly, the average DDT content in mother's milk in Delhi was found to be 1.6 ppm. The highest value recorded was 40 ppm. So, there are various sources of water pollution and if these sources are not controlled, the water bodies will remain polluted. As far as the adverse effects of water pollution are concerned, we have already seen a large number of them. If we look at the list of common waterborne diseases, they are many and they are caused either by bacteria or viruses. Contamination of water by bacteria or viruses is generally caused by unhygienic disposal of wastes into the water system. In our country, this practice is common and that is the reason why we suffer so much on this account. A large number of deaths are caused each year by these diseases. In addition, a large number of people suffer for days, weeks and even months. When water is liable to be polluted due to the discharge of wastes, is there no way to control it? The answer is simple. Where human intelligence has made progress in the field of human settlements, industrial development and agriculture, there it has also achieved results in the field of pollution prevention and control. Prevention of pollution means that preventive measures should be taken so that pollution does not occur or is minimized to the extent possible. This can be achieved in various ways. In the case of agriculture, the best preventive measure is that excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers should be checked. It is the responsibility of the user of fertilizers and pesticides to see that only that much fertilizer and pesticide are used which are necessary for the cultivation. 
Farmers also have to be careful while plying the field. They should avoid the excessive use of water in the field. This way, the chances of soil erosion also would be less and the fertilizers and pesticides going into the rivers can be avoided. In the case of wastewater generated by industries, it can be reused. Let us take the example of the cotton textile mercerizing process. The cloth is passed through 20 to 25 percent caustic soda solution and then washed with water, resulting in a dilute solution of caustic soda. This is called wash liquor. Generally, this liquor is allowed to go waste and results in water pollution. But it can be reused after concentration. This will not only result in prevention of water pollution, but will also save caustic soda. The tannery industry is considered to be a very potent source of water pollution. Chromium salts used during tanning are utilized to the extent of only 70%. 30% goes waste. This high concentration of chromium in wastewater makes it highly toxic. Chromium can be recovered from wastewater and reused. Experimentally, this technique has been found to be successful. In metal plating industries, large quantities of metals pass out with wastewater and result in pollution of receiving water bodies. There also, the waste liquor can be reused or the metal present in it can be recovered and reused. This will result in both effective pollution prevention and cost saving. Household sewage is one of the major sources of water pollution and eutrophication. At present, most of it remains untreated and flows into rivers, lakes or oceans. Raw sewage is rich in bicarbonate, chloride, sulfates, sodium, calcium and magnesium. All these are nutrients for soil and can be suitably utilized for irrigation and in forestry. The technology of creating plantations with the sewage is economic and it can be utilized for creating green belts around cities. Waste lands can be utilized for raising forests. It will also help in keeping the groundwater table in better position. So, on the one hand, the problem of water pollution will be solved. And on the other, we will get forests on wastelands.